folks. So we have um, item 21, and I have a mover and a <coughs> seconder for this. The mover is Councillor Holtz, the seconder is Mayor Goff, and Mayor Goff will um, lead off on this. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr Chairman. Um, I want to strongly support the recommendations uh, of this independent review of Auckland's uh, cultural heritage institutions. I think the last three papers demonstrate something very clearly. We've just spent $60 million. That's uh, no small sum of money, but it is a reflection of the importance that every one of us places on preserving and promoting our heritage, uh, our identity and our sense of place. But when you look at how we go about managing and coordinating our cultural institutions, we're dealing with a system that is outdated, fragmented, and reflects more the pre-amalgamation Auckland than it does uh, the creation of our city as a unified city. When I look at what uh, officials are telling me, they say that under the current governance arrangements, several different acts uh, it's questionable whether we actually have the ability under the status quo to provide proper oversight of the investment. We certainly don't have the ability readily to set priorities across the sector and we are struggling to show to our ratepayers that we have a system that ensures transparency, accountability and value for money. None of this is new to any of you because you've seen the Auckland plan, you've seen the arts and cultural strategy, and many of you will have read the Walker plan, uh, the Walker report. Uh, all of them talk about the need to bring the sector together and to better coordinate it. I've got a letter signed by Roy Clare, uh, who was a person I had great respect for, uh, and Chris Brooks, equally, at the RFA. Um, which is in response to the Chief Executive of, uh, of, of Council, Stephen Town, and this is dated November 2015, and it talks about the need for a framework for a citywide cultural strategy, it talks about a strategic governance review, it talks about having some framework whereby we can uh, assess all future investments for our current and future cultural facilities. It is a very sound plan and report but we haven't yet acted on it, and it's now 18 months old. So what uh, I think is, is absolutely essential is that we do a thorough review of the sector. I don't think it can be done by the institutions, and I don't even think it should be done uh, by, by in-house by council. I think it needs to be an independent review. Uh, maybe involving um, somebody with international skills in this area, certainly involving somebody also that uh, maybe a two-person panel uh, that has skills in terms of governance and accountability. This ought in no way to be seen as a cost-cutting exercise, but it ought in every way to be seen as the determination of this council to ensure that we have got our priorities right and we are getting value for money. That's what our constituents expect of us. Before this meeting, I took the precaution of talking to uh, the key people across the sector and also to the Minister of Culture and Heritage. Uh, one of the things that will come out of this review, I'm sure, will be a change in legislation. And if you don't have the Minister on side, you're pushing it uphill right from the start. I want to quote Maggie Barry. I'm sure she won't mind me doing this. Uh, she described the current governance arrangements as unusual and outdated. She said she welcomed the review and she said she'd be happy to work with us uh, at the legislative needs at the end of the process. I really welcome that. Uh, I think we will get some cross-party support because people know that we are spending a lot of money and we have to have a proper arrangement to set our priorities and to ensure accountability. <coughs> uh, I met with um, uh, Vince uh, Lapanovich from the Maritime Museum. I don't know whether Vince is still, yep, he's back there. Um, I hope none of you guys mind me quoting you. Uh, and David Winston, and they said that they were very keen on the review and it was really important for the sector to learn to collaborate better together. Um, I, I met with, uh, I talked to William on the phone 
And William, your comment was that you welcomed it and you need to, we need to look at the system holistically. And that's exactly what Roy Clare was saying, um, you know, a couple of years ago. Uh, Leslie McTurk from BOTAT, um, I talked to on the phone and she said she's been pushing for a joined up approach for as long as she can remember. Uh, and uh, Michael, I think your, your comments would reflect that. And uh, Chris, uh, uh, I talked to you on the phone about it and you said you're absolutely supportive of it. Just get on and do it. Uh, and that's what I'm recommending to, uh, to this uh, council, that we should just get on and do this. We're investing a huge sum of money. Our assets uh, are in excess of a billion dollars. We've got major expenditure items, as we've just heard uh, from Michael coming up. We've got changes in lease arrangements, potentially for the Maritime Museum, for the observatory. And we've got a range of smaller organisations. The, the Howick uh, Historic Village is one of my favourites. Uh, they've indicated to me the way that they're struggling. To have a holistic stra strategy to bring these things together, to have a 21st century governance and accountability framework, I believe is absolutely essential. Uh, and that's why I'm seconding this proposal. Thank you. Councillor Hulse. Thank you. I think the Mayor's covered it well. I just want to reiterate a couple of points. For me, the critical thing is this in no way is a <coughs> cost-saving exercise. I think we just need to be really, really clear and you know, draw a, a quite a large line under that. I, I don't think this needs to be viewed as changing anything that anyone has got wrong. This is actually about looking at the incredible potential that we see in front of us. I mean, what a bunch of stars these organisations are, but they are, you know, some of the governance arrangements are a bit tired and they were fine in the 90s and suddenly, you know, we're at a different stage. And I think for me, this review gives us the impetus that's needed to make the very best of the extraordinary gifts that we've got in these organisations. The ability to join up and, you know, have one one entrance point to all of these organisations so we can connect and link up, whether it's Matariki, whether it's other events, you just move seamlessly between all of these organisations and I think that's what Aucklanders want. So I think we need to look at this as an opportunity, Mr Chair, and I welcome the ability to participate most actively in this process. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I totally support the review, <coughs> but I have two questions uh, to either the mother or the seconder, or anybody really, and that <laughs> is um, how much will the review cost and when do we expect it done by? And I think they should be part of the recommendations, uh, so we've got clarity around that. <coughs> if we leave it open, look, it could take, you know, three days. years. So I think it's important to have a time frame around that and what, if any, budget is associated with that. And is it extra or is it within our current budgets we have? <coughs> Yeah. Um, it, shall I have a go at that one, Penny? Or? Shall we have, we'll have a combined crack at it. Okay. <laughs> um, the first thing is the, the second uh, recommendation sets that mm. uh, effectively we pass to environment and community the responsibility for developing the review program, uh, including setting the terms of reference, appointing the review panel, uh, and developing an engagement plan with both the institutions and the public. Uh, I have no idea at this point what that will cost, but sometimes you have to spend money to save money. Um, in terms of a time frame, um, again, it's finding the balance between being thorough but getting this done as quickly as possible so we can start to make progress. Uh, I'm imagining, Penny might correct me, I'm imagining that we would uh, do this within the, uh, with, within the space of uh, no more than 12 months. Uh, hopefully a bit quicker than that, but maybe if I can pass to Penny. I, I agree, and I think <laughs> Councillor Simpson's questions are absolutely on the button, I think, when it first gets reported. This is our testing the waters, is everyone okay with it? When it comes to the committee, that's when I think we need to be a bit more hard and fast and, you know, work with our partners and bring a budget and a time frame through to the committee. And I will comment as Chair of Finance that, that it's only March and if this could inform the LTP that would even be better, so that's less than a year. Yep. So, Councillor Cooper. Thank you. And mine was also around the review. Um, I just, <coughs> I've read the report, but I'm, I mean, I think it's a bit like the 17A review as well. We seem to be going outside our organisation to review when we've got, you know, some excellent staff here that could do that for us and we're already paying them and that's my concern around we're going out to independence and it costs us. And so I want to understand why we aren't getting our CEO to get together the right people to do the review of all of our services as well as this. 
I think the short answer is we maybe thought shorter as well. The short answer was I think we all we, we felt as though it would be better to have an independent review and have someone from outside any of the institutions. But Sir Don will uh, comment. Well, I would only say, Mr. Chairman, it, it is important to have an outside influence in the review, not necessarily dominated from the outside. I think the real challenge, and this was hit upon by the mayor in his comments. You want to be able to go to Wellington with a package that everyone agrees to because he and I know what it's like when Auckland is divided on an issue in Wellington. And you, what you think is going to be a, a short piece of legislation grinds away for three or four years because the divided nature. And I don't think it's beyond the capacity to get uh, consent, but you've got to work very hard to get it here before it goes to Wellington for statutory change. Absolutely. Councillor Cashmore. No, Sir Don's just made the exact point I was about to make, so thank you, sir. Uh, Councillor Walker, Wayne Walker. Yes, um, I just want to raise um, an issue around the um, recommendations, um, particularly A, um, approve that an independent review of Auckland Council's investment in major cultural institutions is undertaken. undertaken. If you look at the uh, Walker report, it, it emphasises Auckland, which is not just Auckland Council. And if we're looking at um, investment, it's not just Auckland Council's investment. Um, there's investment from the wider community, the philanthropic uh, community, which is going to be increasingly important, and that of government. So I, I have a, a real concern that the way that we're structuring the direction here is just focusing on Auckland Council's investment. I'd like to see a change to the, to the wording of that and suggest that certainly approve that um, an independent review of investment in Auckland's major cultural heritage institutions is undertaken might be a better way to word it. <coughs> you don't think that will come out in the wash, Councillor Walker? Because I, well, I think I that... Mean, uh, there's a few things unsaid in here. Clearly, you know, we've got the Rafa facilities, yeah. and then in clause number 12, we talk about um, the smaller institutions, and there may be a typo there at the end there, the, the fifth to last word says may need to be considered. I think the word is probably more appropriate, it says will need to be considered. So, well, through I, you, Mr Chair, you know, I'm just making the observation that A is a significant limitation. Concern there. Yeah. So I've suggested an alternative wording, which is relatively straightforward. Well, can, can I just the thing is that would increase the scope of the review and, and needless to say, it starts to pull it outside our investment. It's <coughs> a little bit difficult. Meg off. If I can just be helpful on this, um, I don't think we should try and write the terms of the, 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 terms of the review here. Uh, I think we should do that in the committee where we can focus on it. But I'm sure we can pick that point up, Councillor Walker, uh, uh, in the terms of reference. Councillor Lee, my please. Yes, I... I um would just like to sound a precautionary note here. I, I think Sir Don's point about building a consensus in Auckland first before we dash off to Wellington for uh, legislation change is, is a sound one. I, I'm, I, I support an independent review. I am concerned ab about comments um, around the table uh, but that seem to um, preconceive the outcomes. I, I um, reject the notion that bigger is always better and that um, corporate mergers are the way to go. Um, that's an assumption um, that I'm picking up and I reject it. I, I would like the review to be objective um, as possible. I think we need to point out that we're not dealing with companies here, we're dealing with very unique cultural institutions. The Auckland War Memorial Museum has its own legislation for very good reasons. Similarly, MOTAT is absolutely unique, built on, on a culture of volunteerism and um, technical expertise, volunteer technical expertise. Um, I'd be very reluctant to see uh, those, the uniqueness of those organisations banged together in some sort of uh, 
a super city like merger. So um, I'm all for a review. Uh, let's not pre preconceive the outcomes. And I'm just concerned about um, the need for me had talked about 21st century governance that we don't carry with us 1980s assumptions. Thank you. Right, well, folks, it's um, yeah, that's good. a long day so far, but we have a mover and a seconder. I'm going to put it. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Excellent unanimity. We're going to come back at quarter past one. It's actually quarter two, and we will do actually the 17A review. Number 17 will come forward, and then we will do the disposals after that.